Howdy folks, welcome back to Elite Dangerous with the Mighty Jingles. So, what have we learned since my last video? Well, for a start, I was doing, even fun though it was, I was doing exploration and discovery all wrong and not actively using my discovery scanner, which can detect um, astronomical bodies out to a 500 light second range if you use it properly. Also, interdiction is a real pain in the arse. And it's quite a hot topic on the Elite forums at the moment. Now, for the benefit of anybody who doesn't actually know what I'm talking about here, Beta 3 and Elite introduced a frame shift interdiction modules that anybody can buy at space stations that happen to be selling them. It's an equipment module you can fit to your ship that messes around with the frame shift drive super cruise engine of player and non-player character ships. And what's happening right here is somebody has managed to close the distance behind me, traveling at super luminal speeds. They've hit me with a frame shift interdiction tether, and now I'm fighting to direct my ship towards the escape vector so I can get out of there without being dumped into real space. Chances are it's just a system authority vessel pulling me over for a routine security scan, but it might not be. And it's always better to be safe than sorry. And I have been getting a lot of practice at this, but it's been practice at the hands of the non-player character system authority vessels. Generally speaking, a player is not going to interdict a Viper, which is what I'm flying here. The Viper's a heavy fighter. It's low on cargo capacity and it's heavy on armament. It's not an easy target. But it's the frequency with which the system authority vessels are constantly pulling you over for random security scans that has been pissing off a fair number of people on the Elite forums. I've just managed to successfully avoid one interdiction attempt. I realigned myself with my uh, target destination, Bamford Station, and barely one minute later somebody hits me with a frameshift drive interdiction tether again. And I've got to go through the whole process once more. It's a real pain in the arse. But I would argue that it's a necessary evil. You see, here's the thing. The non-player character system authority ships, the Vipers, the Eagles, and sometimes even the Sidewinders, they're not particularly good at the whole interdiction process. Um, they're a little sloppy at how they do it, and they don't have top-of-the-range interdiction systems. So you do have plenty of time to line yourself up with that escape vector and beat them at the interdiction minigame. Now, this is valuable experience. This is teaching you how to avoid interdiction with practically no penalty if you get it wrong. The worst thing that's going to happen, assuming, of course, you know, you don't have a criminal record, um... <laughs> There's no bounty on your head. You're not wanted in that system. You're not transporting stolen goods or cargo that's illegal in that system. You know, assuming you don't fall into any of those categories, then the very worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to stop you, scan you, wish you a good day, and send you about your business. You haven't lost anything other than some time, and what you've gained is something that you're going to need later on in the game. You have gained experience in how to avoid being interdicted in future. And trust me, you are going to need that experience, because the very last thing that you want to happen is that the first time you ever become the victim of an interdiction attempt is when it is not at the hands of a system authority ship who's only going to stop you, check your cargo, and send you about your business. But it's at the hand of a player pirate in a much, much more powerful ship than you with an upgraded interdiction module who's very, very good because he's had a lot of practice at interdicting ships, and he's going to kill you and he's going to take your cargo. That's a very, very expensive way to learn how to beat interdiction. So, pain in the arse though it may be, all of these system authority ships that are pulling you over for random security checks in those well-patrolled, high-security systems are actually doing you a favour. So, as long as you've kept your nose clean, and you don't have anything to hide, and you're not up to no good, being pulled over by these non-player characters, or Having non-player characters attempt to pull you over with an interdictor is actually a valuable lesson. It's a great way to teach new players how to avoid interdiction in a low-risk environment where the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to be told to go about their business rather than have it happen at the hands of somebody who's going to kill you and take your cargo. So we've seen plenty of examples so far of what it looks like to be the victim of an interdiction attempt. But in an effort to better prepare you for when it happens to you, 
I think it's going to be necessary to show you what it looks like from the other side of the gun sight. What, what exactly does somebody have to do in order to successfully interdict your ship uh, so that you are even better prepared to deal with it when it happens to you? To do that, I'm going to have to go looking for some victims and I'm going to have to fit a frame shift drive interdiction module to my Viper. So, I'm cruising around the LHS-411 system looking for a target that's got a criminal record in this system so I can interdict them, pull them into real space, kill them and claim a bounty on them. But um, there doesn't seem to be anybody wanted. And I don't have a kill warrant scanner, so I can't scan a potential victim to find out whether or not he's got any bounties issued against him in a system other than the four LHS-411 system where I am. Uh, and there just isn't anybody here who's wanted. So. Commander Macro Ford, if you're watching this video, I do apologise for picking on you, but it was purely for demonstration purposes. Now, a couple of things that you need to realise about the ship that's trying to interdict you. First of all, they have to be behind you, and they have to be close, within a couple of light seconds. So pay very, very careful attention to your scanner, particularly for dangerous ships like Vipers, Eagles, Asps, Cobra Mark III's, piloted by players and the way to tell whether or not a ship is piloted by a player a player will always have the title commander all players belong to the pilots federation non-player characters do not belong to the pilots federation don't get the commander title so keep an eye on that scanner and if you see somebody approaching on an intercept course from behind and they're in a well-armed ship start taking steps to defend yourself and there's a number of things that you can do if you are paying attention that will make it very difficult for the pursuing ship to get close enough at the correct attitude in order to hit you with the frame shift drive interdiction tether, which is what I'm about to do to the unfortunate Commander Macro Ford right here, as soon as I get close enough. Now, this is my very, very first interdiction attempt, and I'll guarantee you this is not the first time Commander Macro Ford has been interdicted. He's flying a Type 6 transporter. It's a couple of steps up the uh, cargo ship ladder so he's been doing this for a while and he's made quite a bit of money doing it this ain't going to be the first time he's been interdicted and I quite literally have no idea what to expect when I fire off my interdiction module I've assigned it to fire group 2 which means that once I'm in range I just hold down my right mouse button and it starts the interdiction process and I'm now in range and here we go and it's exactly the opposite. This is what it looks like for somebody who's trying to interdict you. It's basically exactly the opposite of the interdiction minigame. I have to try to keep him zeroed and he's trying to hit that escape vector and he's better at it than I am. And he's, yep, he's probably, oh, I don't know, maybe. No, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. He's gonna get away. Yep, he's definitely done this a couple of times. <laughs> I've lost it. And if I fail to interdict, he stays in super cruise, shoots past me at super luminal speeds, and I am the one who gets dumped into real space with no chance of catching up and having another go. So that's the absolute worst case scenario where a pursuing ship manages to get close enough behind you in the first place in order to fire off the interdiction module. There are steps that you can take to ensure that your pursuer never gets that close. The first and most basic thing you can do is just jump out of there. Your ship is at its most vulnerable when it's decelerating prior to dropping out of supercruise into real space in order to make your approach to whichever orbital you're attempting to dock at. And it's while you're decelerating that the ship that's pursuing you is more likely to catch up. If you suspect you're about to become the victim of a pirate, just point your nose away from your destination right into deep space, accelerate, Pick another star system and jump the hell out of there. It'll cost you a couple of tons of fuel at the most. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than losing your cargo, potentially also losing your ship. As you can see right here, I was actually in the process of jumping to another system when somebody attempted to interdict me. What I'm doing here is your standard interdiction evasion procedure, line it up with the escape vector, break the interdiction attempt, then quickly before your heat levels go critical, point the nose of your ship to your destination star system, complete the hyperjump. What I could have done was completely ignore the interdiction attempt and just get the nose of this ship pointed towards my destination and jump out before he managed to get a successful interdiction off. Either way does work. 
I have managed to successfully avoid an addiction using both methods. The other thing that you can do to ensure that you never get hit with an interdiction attempt in the first place is to remember that the interdicting ship has to approach you from behind. So bearing this in mind, I have had success in avoiding interdiction altogether by simply deliberately overshooting my target destination, zooming past at super light speeds, then slowing down, turning around and pointing the nose of my ship toward any pursuers and approaching my destination from that angle. Again, on a similar note, bearing in mind that the interdicting ship has to approach you from behind, if you find yourself in the process of being interdicted, you can just turn the ship around and lead your pursuer on a merry chase across whichever star system you're in, trying to get a fix on the rear of your ship. Here I'm tracking down a non-player character with a bounty on his head. He's flying an eagle, goes by the name of Nathaniel Page, and he just keeps turning his ship around and zooming past me. I didn't realise at the time, I just thought, wow, the AI in this game, uh, it's telling me I have to get behind the target before I can fire off the interdictor. At the time I was thinking, wow, so, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen one of the AI non-player characters display you know, this kind of uh, evasive flying. And then it occurred to me, actually, is he trying to interdict me? <laughs> is he trying to get behind me? Uh, and, and force me out of, into real space. And it turns out that is, in fact, exactly what he was doing. So I thought, well, all right, I'll let him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's exactly what he was doing. He was actually trying to get behind my ship while I was trying to get behind his ship in an effort to see who was going to be the first one to actually fire off the interdictor. So I just let him drop me out into real space. So. <laughs> well, you know, if you must... <laughs> deployed the beam lasers and went for it. I must admit, this wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. I mean, I'm flying a Mark III Cobra at this stage, um, and that's an eagle. And the eagle's a good fighter, but it's the first real upgrade you're going to get over your Sidewinder, and it's nowhere near as powerful a ship as a, Mark, as a properly equipped Mark III Cobra can be. But the beam lasers that I'm using here are not really designed to be used against small fighters like eagles or sidewinders. See, he's opening up with uh, multiple multi-cannons there. The eagle is a good ship. It's a big improvement over your sidewinder. It's got a great jump range, it's fast. It can mount more weapons, but it struggles to power those weapons. It's, it's got a pretty inadequate power plant. So if you are thinking about getting yourself an eagle as your first upgrade over your starting sidewinder, then by all means go for it. It's a great little fighter, it's very cheap and it's very capable. That inadequate power plant, on the other hand, is going to be a problem. So my advice would be, rather than trying to find some place that sells an upgraded power plant, which is going to be prohibitively expensive anyway, and very hard to find, get yourself an upgraded power distribution unit and make more efficient use of the power that your power plant is producing in the first place. It's all well and good upgrading to a ship that has an extra weapons hard point over the sidewinder, but it's no use if you can't actually afford to power the weapons that you put in all three of those hard points without having to switch off things like, you know, life support or your engines. So <laughs> that's my advice if you're thinking again, an eagle. And uh, while these two beam lasers are not the ideal weapon to be engaged in a small fast target like this, they, well, you know, you just throw enough shit at the wall and some of it's gonna stick. And I have at this stage actually started to learn how to effectively manage my power systems myself. The three little pippers that you can see controlling the graduated bars down to the right of my ship's health and shield display actually control the amount of power that I'm feeding to individual systems. And I hadn't realised this when I put my last video up, but enough people told me about it in the comments that I started to experiment with it and it really does make a hell of a difference. Three different systems indicators down there. Well, so you've got systems, engines, and weapons. The more power you feed to your weapons cooling systems, the longer you can fire your weapons without them overheating. The more power you put to your engines makes a significant difference to the speed of your ship. And the more power you put to your systems increases the rate at which your shields regenerate. Actually diverting power to various different systems is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you just do it using the arrow keys. So the left arrow key diverts power to the systems, because systems is on the left. 
the central up arrow key diverts power to the engines, and the right arrow key diverts more power to your weapons. It's obviously a trade-off. The more power you feed to one system, the less power is available for another system. Here I'm sitting right behind my target, so I want power to my weapons. I want my weapon cooling systems to have lots of nice power so I can continue firing those weapons without my weapons overheating and shutting down. If I need to get behind my target and manoeuvre, then I'm going to put more power into the engines. If I'm getting shot at and I want my shields back up quickly, I'm going to divert power from the weapons to the systems. Um, it's a lot like the old system that you used in the X-Wing games and the TIE Fighter games, and it works really, really well. Behind the target again. Got him. Easy enough. 1249 credit bounty received. So, if you have been interdicted, and it's not a system authority vessel just pulling you over for a routine scan, it's a non-player character or a player pirate or bounty hunter who has less than honourable intentions if your ship is up to it, you always of course have the option of fighting your way out. On the other hand, if your ship is not up to it, your options are a lot more limited. It's basically surrender or run away. This is Commander Chalk 4. He's a player. He's also, like me, flying a Cobra. I don't know what he's done, but he's wanted for something. Which makes him fair game. And this is my first successful interdiction attempt. He just wasn't able to shake me. I'm using a... Well, it's not a top-of-the-range interdiction module, but it's certainly better than the cheap 12,000 credit version that most people are going to be using at first. And I'm starting to have a bit of practice at doing this now. And so I'm able to pull him out of Super Cruise and into real space. Now, the thing about the Cobra Mark III is while it can be a fantastically powerful ship, it's the first real multi-purpose vessel that you're liable to get your hands on when you're playing Elite. It will cost you in the region of 250,000 credits. And you never really know what you're getting into when you start a fight with a Cobra. It's a multi-purpose ship. It's exactly as dangerous as you set it up. Now, I'm not particularly dangerous, but these two beam lasers that I have are exactly the kind of weapons that are designed to be used against a medium-class ship like a Cobra. Commander Chalk 4 appears to have set his ship up as a cargo transport, so he's not interested in getting into a fight. He's putting all of his power to his engines. He's getting as far away from me as he possibly can, so the mass of my Cobra, these are 400-ton ships, is not going to inhibit his frameshift drive, and he's jumped out and made a clean getaway. Now, if I had a frameshift drive wake scanner, I could analyse the trace left by his engines, figure out where he's gone, and continue the chase. But I haven't, so he's managed to get away clean. At some point, however, even if you've kept your nose clean, you're not wanted, you're just going about your lawful business, you are going to get interdicted, and it's not going to be by a system security vessel. You are not going to evade it. You are not going to be able to fight your way clear. It's going to be a pirate. He's going to want what you're carrying. And things are going to get very, very expensive for you. And I dare say I'm probably correct in guessing that the first time it happens to the majority of players, it's going to be when you're in a Zorgan Peterson hauler. It's the white Ford Transit van of the galaxy, and it's almost completely defenseless. The Zorgan Peterson hauler is very much a one-trick pony. It's good for one thing and one thing only, but it is pretty good at that one thing, which is hauling cargo. It's the first ship you're likely to get your hands on for a reasonable price that's capable of carrying more than four tons of cargo. And so the overwhelming majority of people who are trying to make a living transporting goods from one system to another are going to be doing it in one of these. Unfortunately, it is a big, juicy target for pirates. If you get interdicted when you're flying one of these things, it couldn't outrun or outfight a Sidewinder, let alone the kind of pirate ship that has just locked me into his sights. I am being interdicted at the moment by a guy flying an ASP. Now, those of you who don't know what an ASP is, you won't get much change out of 7 million credits for one of those ships. And he's picking on a Zorgan Peterson hauler in one of the newbie starting systems. And this is a real problem at the moment in the Elite Premium Beta, because the starting systems are crawling with pirates in ridiculously overpowered ships. Now, once you've been interdicted, your engine goes on emergency cooldown, so you can't jump away again immediately. I checked my scanner, realised there's a frickin' ASP behind me. I mean, 
This is the equivalent of a battleship pulling over a fishing boat. I have absolutely no chance here. My one shot is to try to run away. Of course, at this stage, I still haven't realised that I can divert emergency power to my engines to give me a, a fighting chance of getting out of here, and this is going to cost me dearly. To be fair to the guy pulling me over, I mean, make no mistake, he's a scumbag. He's flying a ridiculously overpowered ship, and he's preying on newbies in the starting systems. But I have to admit a certain amount of grudging respect for the way that he does it. He interdicts me, he gives me a clear warning, jump out and I will kill you. Hand over your cargo, or you're dead. I try to run, he takes my shields down, he targets my engines, he disables my ship. I might sound all calm about it now, but at the time I was absolutely furious. The cargo that I was carrying in this particular trade run was for a bulletin board contract that was going to finally provide me with enough money to upgrade to my first Cobra Mark III. That's the reason why I was flying this piece of crap in the first place, because it's a cheap and reliable cargo vessel. Unfortunately, the very first time I got jumped by a pirate, it was a guy flying a frickin' asp, hunting newbies in the starting systems. But he was professional about it. It was an absolute textbook takedown. He interdicted me, he issued me with a warning, I chose to ignore the warning, which left him no option but to shoot at me, disabling my engines, he then, what he's done right now, is he's, you can see all of my cargo has just floated off into space, all those superconductors. He's fired a piece of equipment that's called a cargo hatch limpet breaker, which latches onto my ship, overrides my cargo hatch, and spills all of my cargo into space. And right now he's just flying around with his cargo scoop deployed, hoovering up all of my profits. And because I tried to run, he disabled my engines, which means I am stuck in space and there's no facility for me to send a distress signal. This is basically game over for me now. Um, the only thing I can do is hit the self-destruct button and start again from scratch. Now, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, Jingles, it's your own fault for trying to run. No, it's not my fault for trying to run. I wasn't doing anything wrong. He's the bad guy here. However, here's the thing. If I hadn't run, if I just surrendered my cargo to him, then maybe he would have let me live. I don't know, but perhaps he would have let me live. Let's say he would, and I was able to continue about my business. He then has not committed any crime, as far as the game is concerned. I have surrendered my cargo to him of my own free will. No crime has been committed. No bounty has been placed on his head. He will never be called to justice for what he's done. In order for him to actually do something that is considered a crime and therefore get a bounty placed on his head, he has to shoot at me. He has to pirate my ship. So, stubborn git that I am, <laughs> I will never just surrender my cargo to a pirate because then they get away with it. And the thing is, when you're flying something like an asp in a starting system, picking on newbies flying Zorg and Peterson haulers, there is absolutely nothing that you can expect the system security forces to do. An NPC pilot in a Viper or an Eagle is not going to be able to take down a guy flying a battle wagon like an ass. He's pretty much untouchable. And while I do have a certain amount of grudging respect and admiration for the way that he took me down, uh, it was absolutely textbook. I mean, I've been jacked since by other guys who also, funnily enough, are flying asps. Uh, they didn't have nearly the same amount of style and professionalism as this scumbag did, but make no mistake, he is scum, <laughs> okay? <laughs> He's making a living preying on the weak and defenceless. He's scum of the lowest order. He's very good at it, but scum is what he is. And it was quite ironic because right before this happened, I'd been reading a topic on the Elite forums where people have been asking the question, who are the lowest form of life in Elite? Is it the pirates or is it the bounty hunters? There is absolutely no doubt in my mind, it's the pirates. You have nothing to fear from a bounty hunter unless you've done something very stupid or very, very illegal. Personally, I think bounty hunters are fantastic and I wish there were more of them in the game. Or, or at least I wish that the ones that are in the game were in the right place. They need to be in the starting systems, because that's where all the pirates are, preying on the weak and defenceless. 
So, top insider tip to any player bounty hunters playing Elite and watching this video. I don't know where it is you're looking for your bounties, but you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Get yourself to the starting systems. That's where all the scumbags are, preying on the weak and defenseless. I'm certainly not complaining that there are pirates in Elite. I think it's absolutely fantastic that the game is freeform enough to allow people the flexibility to choose to be scum like that. <laughs> You know, choice is very important in a multiplayer game like this. Now, you might be sitting here watching this video thinking, holy shit, is it really that bad for, you know, a new player starting to, you know, finding his feet in the game? Are you constantly just getting jacked by pirates in the starting systems over and over? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I've lost track of the number of... I mean, I've successfully evaded being pirated a number of times, but I have uh, failed to evade being pirated three times in two days and it's cost me a lot of money each time. But that's what happens if you choose to play on the open server with other players. Nobody forces me to play this way. I can, if I choose, play the game in uh, solo play mode, which is exactly the same as everything you've seen so far in this video, except there are no players. It's just you in a galaxy populated by NPCs. If, on the other hand, you do as I do, and you play the game in multiplayer mode, you have to accept that this sort of thing is at some point going to happen to you. And that's part of the attraction of playing the game. Never knowing what's going to happen next every time you launch from an orbital. And while at the moment the starting systems are infested with pirates, the only reason that's happening is because it is so easy for them to do it. Because the system security vessels aren't capable of dealing with the threat and there aren't enough player bounty hunters to keep the number of pirates in check. You see, the thing is, multiplayer games like this have a, a way of reaching a natural state of equilibrium. At the moment, things are out of balance. There are far too many pirates in the starting systems uh, preying on new players. There are not nearly enough bounty hunters to keep them in check, and it's a real problem for new players buying into the beta test, crawling their way up the property ladder, getting themselves their first ship upgrade, and just finding themselves being preyed on by pirates all the time. It's not going to take long for those players to realise that things are too hot for them in the starting systems and they're going to go elsewhere, they're going to spread out across the galaxy. The number of targets available is going to decline. The pirates are going to start fighting amongst themselves for the scraps. The casual pirates are going to think, screw this, not enough profit in it, they're going to go elsewhere, they're going to start doing something else. Player bounty hunters are going to realise that there's a lot of opportunity in the starting systems because it's such a target-rich environment for them with all the pirates there. Life is going to start to get very hot for the pirates they're going to have to either rethink their choice of career or move somewhere else where it's not quite as hot, which is going to allow the starting players to, you know, establish themselves a little bit more easily than it is at the moment. Games like this just have that way of reaching a natural state of equilibrium without any kind of input from the developers. Just leave it up to the players to sort out the problem for themselves. And the fact is that even if it takes a couple of weeks for the situation to sort itself out. It's really not that much of a problem at the moment, even for a new player. It's only been a couple of days since that hijack attempt, and I've already managed to successfully avoid enough further attacks that I've done enough successful trade runs that I've accumulated the quarter of a million credits that I needed to buy my first Mark III Cobra. So already I am no longer a target. It's funny how quickly the attacks stop when you're flying something like a Cobra Mark III. <laughs> scumbag pirates love easy targets. That's why they've chosen to be scumbag pirates in the first place. The solution is not to campaign for the removal of their right to choose to be scumbag pirates. The solution is to not be an easy target. Whether that means learning how to avoid their attacks in the first place, moving to somewhere where the pirates aren't, or upgrading to the kind of ship that makes them think twice about how easy it's going to be to take your cargo. So, I uh, hope this video has been useful to all the little fish swimming out there in shark-infested waters, just hoping that they can avoid trouble for long enough to grow into big fish themselves. As always, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.